to you a message this morning. I want to talk to you about maturity, spiritual maturity, or a growing in Christ. Let me begin with a poem. I don't know the author. The author is unknown. It says, one night I had a wondrous dream. One set of footsteps were there to be seen. The footsteps of my precious Lord, but mine were not along the shore. But then some stranger prince appeared, and I asked the Lord, what do we have here? Those prints are large, and they're round, and they're neat. My Lord, they're too big to be feet. My child, he said in somber tones, for miles I've carried you alone. I challenged you to walk in faith, but you refused and made me wait. You hemmed and you hawed, you would not grow. The walk of faith you'll never know. So I got tired, I got fed up, and there I dropped you on your butt. Because in life there comes a time when one must fight and one must climb. When one must rise and take a stand or leave their butt pits in the sand. This poem is saying it in a rather forthright and blunt message what Paul was saying to different groups in the early church. To the Corinthians, he writes in 1 Corinthians 3 and 2, I gave you milk to drink and not solid food, for you were not able to receive it. Why? Because some Corinthians were still babes. They had not grown or matured spiritually. They were not even able to stand on their own. Paul still had to carry them. Apparently, these uh, Christians, these Corinthian Christians, didn't understand what Paul was trying to say to them, or maybe they just didn't want to believe it and hear it. Because Paul had to write a second time to them. In 2 Corinthians, you find these words. He says, finally, brethren, be perfect, be matured, be grown up in Christ. And it wasn't just to the Corinthian church, to the Corinthian believers he had to admonish, to the Hebrew Christians, he wrote these words in Hebrews 6 and 1. Therefore, leaving the elementary teachings about Christ, that is the milk, the basic stuff, let us press on to maturity, to the meaty stuff, to the grown-up stuff. To the Ephesian church, he challenged in Ephesians 4.15, speaking the truth in love, grow up. In him, Jesus, in all things. Now, Paul isn't the only one who wrote about these subjects. Peter wrote to the believers about the need to mature in Christ. And so did John, and so did James in their epistles. But most importantly, so did Jesus. The master wrote in his meaty sermon, or spoke in his meaty sermon on the mount, he said in Matthew chapter 5, be ye therefore perfect, complete, grown up, mature in godliness and character, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Such writings come across in Scripture as more than just suggestions, more than just opinions. They come across as something imperative, something almost command like, and they are. So when you think about this and, and read about it, it sounds like the the uh, ma spiritual maturity was a problem in the early church if they had to write about it so much. I wonder, is it a problem in the church today? I think it might be. I think it might be. So this morning, I'd like to talk to you and share some things about spiritual maturity, growing up in Christ. First of all, growth is natural. It's a natural thing. When we come to Christ and we accept his offer for salvation and forgiveness, we become born again. That's the term Jesus used when he was talking to Nicodemus, born again. Not physically, spiritually he was talking about. The old has become new. Paul expanded on this idea 
in his writing. He said, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation, a new creature. All things are gone, all things have become new. Aren't you glad of that, that you're a new creator? Aren't you glad of that? And like any newborn baby, spiritual babes in Christ are expected to grow. Those mothers here that when you had your baby didn't, and dads, didn't you expect your kids to grow? Of course you did. And while this is not a requirement for entering God's family, the only way you can be born into God's family is to be born again through the precious work of Jesus. But it is the hope and the expectation of every member of God's family that they will grow. That they will grow. Secondly, we know that babies progress and grow at their own pace. Some learn to sit up and walk at an early age. Some others require more time. Some learn to go right from the crawling stage right into standing up and walking. While others go through a process. It takes more time. I kind of wonder, which were you? Which were you? A rapid pace? A slower pace? You know something? It didn't matter as long as you grew. That's true about us spiritually. Some move along at a really quick pace. Some plot along at a slower pace. It doesn't matter as long as you are growing spiritually. But if a baby or a youngster stops growing, or if they aren't growing as they should, then that's a cause for concern. One needs to look at the reasons for that. One needs to do something about that. So let me say it again, number three, let me say it again. It is the hope and the expectation of every parent that each member of their family grows. And that's exactly the same with your Heavenly Father. Now note something that's important. We understand that full, total maturity, that is totally being like Jesus in all aspects, we won't reach that stage until we are joined with the Lord in heaven, until we get home. We know that. But even so, it is the expectation of continued growth that never goes away. God expects you to continually grow. Well, growing, maturing in Christ, what does that mean? What does that mean? Paul gives a good definition in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. He says this, Till we all come into the unity of the faith. Till we come into the unity of the truth. Until we come into agreement with the word of God. Till we understand what the word of God is all about and what it says and what it teaches and what it is. And till we come into the knowledge of the Son of God. Where he's talking about a heart knowledge, not just a head knowledge. Too many people have a head knowledge today and not a heart knowledge. He says, that's what growing up means. Coming into that unity, that agreement, and understanding the word of God, and applying it. And having that relationship, that heart relationship with the Lord Jesus. We come into a perfect, mature, grown-up person. In Romans 8 and 9, Paul said, Seek to be conformed. Conformed? Made into. Developed. Molded into the image of Christ. Simply put, it means growing up and being like Jesus. That's what it means. Is that really possible? Is that really possible? Let me tell you, if it wasn't, God wouldn't have said it. If it wasn't, God wouldn't have asked it. If he says it, we can do it. We can do it. Before I go on, let me clean up three misconceptions about spiritual maturity. Number one, those who are more mature, this is a misconception, those who are more mature, that is more grown up in their faith, receive more of God's grace, more of his favor, more of his attention, 
more of his preference. No, no, no. Not true. That's not true at all. Your level of maturity has no bearing on whether you receive or how much of God's favor, his attention, his preference you receive from him. With God, there's no favorites. He has no partiality. The moment you receive Jesus as your Savior and accept his sacrifice for your sins, God's grace is bestowed upon you and it is equally applied to all. <coughs> Romans 3, verses 21 to 26 tells us that. God's grace allows us to be in right relationship with him no matter where we are, what the level of our maturity is in Christ. Let me say that again. God's grace to you is so wonderful that he allows us to be in right relationship with him no matter what your level is of maturity. And I say thank God for that. Thank God for that. Number two misconception, that spiritual growth or lack of it does not affect God's love for you as his child. Does not affect God's love for you as his child. God does not love mature Christians more than he loves less mature Christians. He doesn't. And you know why? That's because his love is not based on our merit. It's based on his character and his nature. John 4 and 8 says God is love. And his love for us is totally unconditional and without favor to our level of maturity. Thank God. Thank God. However, however, it does please him when he sees you growing. When you strive to know him more, when, to know his word more, to know his ways more, to know him more. It pleases him and touches his heart when he sees you growing in him. Third misconception. Spiritual maturity is not dependent on our chronological age as believers. My many years' experience, I have found that there are some young believers in the faith who show, show maturity. And there are others, believers who have been saved for a long time, yet they're still immature. Have you run across people like that? It has nothing to do with how long you've been a Christian. You would figure that someone who was a Christian for a long time would be more mature. That's not necessarily the case all the time. You can't judge your level of, or a person's level of maturity by their age, how, how long they've been a Christian. God doesn't. God doesn't. Thank God that he doesn't. And as with natural physical growth, there are levels or stages that a person goes through. In 1 John 2, verses 12 to 14, John writes his epistle, his letter, to little children in Christ. So there is a child stage. He also writes to young men. There is a youth stage. And he writes to fathers. There is an adult stage. Cage. And as we progress from level to level, from one to another, that takes time, it takes effort, it takes patience, and it takes perseverance. Maturing in Christ is an ongoing, never-ending process for a believer. Good place to say amen. amen. Maturing is an ongoing process never-ending process in your life. Sometimes we'd like to think we've made it, don't we? Well, I've been a Christian for 47 years. I think I've made it. Think again. You will keep on progressing in Christ until the day you get home. When a man named Pablo Casals, who's a very famous 
musician, reached the age of 95, a young reporter asked him a question. Mr. Consals, you are 95 years old and the greatest cellist that ever lived. Why do you still practice six hours a day? Mr. Callis replied, because I think I'm progressing. Because I think I'm progressing. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Our goal is to make spiritual progress every day. That should be our goal. That is to be more like Jesus in word and in deed and in action. To grow in grace and knowledge. To come into what the Bible says is the fullness of Christ. That's maturity. That's maturity. Rick Warren in his book, Purpose Driven Life. Anybody read that book? Rick Warren? If you haven't, it's a great book. He's a great preacher. Have you? Great. I recommend him some good stuff. Anyway, he says... It takes years for us to physically grow into adulthood. And it takes a full season for fruit to mature and to ripen. The development of Christ-like character cannot be rushed either. Spiritual growth, spiritual maturity takes time. When you try to ripen fruit quickly, it will lose its flavor. I don't know if you know this, but in North America... Tomatoes are usually picked before they're ripe. And that's because it's so they won't bruise while they're being shipped to market. Before they're sold, though, they are sprayed with CO2 or carbon dioxide. And when you do that, the tomato instantly turns to red. Have you picked up a tomato in the store and thought, my goodness, that's really a real solid tomato? I wonder how it came all the way from California and still so solid. (laughs) Now you know. Gassed tomatoes are edible, but they're no match for the flavor of a vine-ripened tomato that's been allowed to mature and ripen. And God does not want, or he does not produce, gassed followers. He wants ripened ones. I thought, you know that, not only tomatoes, they do that, I think, for strawberries. Have you been into the store lately and picked up a strawberry? If you notice, three quarters of it is lovely red, and the top part is white. Yeah. And you felt it. Again, I ask you, how did those strawberries that came from Florida, wherever they came, how did they stay so solid for you to buy? Well, they were picked raw, picked unripe, and they were sprayed. Okay. The spray doesn't hurt us. But it sure doesn't taste like that strawberry you pick on your your backyard, does it? God wants ripened. And ripened takes time. God wants adult believers. Takes time, effort, persistence. One day during a cooking class, the teacher, Mrs. Pritchard, was sharing her secrets for preparing a perfect sauce. And when she ordered the class to the stove to prepare their assignments, she said, don't forget to use wooden spoons. It's very, very important. As Wendy, who was one of her students, stirred her sauce, she contemplated the physics behind the mystery of the wooden spoon. She decided it must have something to do with the conducting of heat. So she approached Mrs. Pritchard to test her theory. Why wooden spoons, she said. Mrs. Pritchard replied, because if I have to sit here listening to all your metal spoons banging against those pots, I'll go nuts. (laughs) Sometimes there's reasons for why things are the way they are. And often these reasons are good reasons. The same goes for the need for spiritual maturity. For growing up in Christ requires there's reasons for it. I want to share quickly this morning eight of them with you. Are you ready? Amen. Number one, maturity in Christ is a must so we can have a deeper understanding of God and have a more intimate relationship with him. As an adult, 
and you know this, an adult can develop a much more meaningful and deeper and fuller relationship than a child can. True? Amen. You can develop a relationship with God as a child, but you can develop a much deeper one as an adult in Christ, growing up. Number two, so we don't stray. So we're not easily de- deceived. We have the ability to stand in our walk. Ephesians 4.14 That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, of cunning craftiness, and deceitful plotting. Folks, that, a lot of that's going on today in the body of Christ. The children of God being tossed back to and fro from this and that. And you get right down to it, it really is nothing but trickery and craftiness and deceit. We have to be careful of that. It's so much harder to fool, to deceive, to trick, to lead astray a spiritually mature believer. You know, Jesus said when he, in Matthew 24, when he gave all those last signs of the last day, did you know he gave a sign, the same sign twice? Just once. One sign twice. He started with it, he pretty well finished with it. And do you know what it was? In the last days, there will be such deception. People will say, here's Christ here, here's Christ there, that's Christ, and so on. He said, don't believe him. Because people will be good at deceiving others. But as I said, it's hard to deceive, more harder to deceive a spiritually mature believer. They know what they believe. They know Reason number three, we need to develop maturity because we can help other people. We can advise other people, counsel other people, correct them, guide them. We can carry their burdens. You don't go to youngsters when you have need of those things. When you need counsel and advice and help and so on, you don't run to a child. You go to an adult, particularly one who's wise and been through it and experienced who's grown up. Number four, it's so we can take our place in the body of Christ and the local church so it can function properly. You know what we need in the bulletin board, all the bulletin boards of churches? We need a sign that says, wanted, spiritually mature believers. Reason number five. It's so that the Lord can entrust you with valuable spiritual things. Like what? Like gifts, position, power, authority, revelation, ministry, and so much more. He can entrust you with those. Let me ask you, why don't you give the keys to give your car to a child? Why not? Come on, tell me. Why don't you give your keys to your child? Right, exactly. Because they're not mature enough to drive it. Because they're not experienced enough. Because they're not responsible enough. Because they haven't matured. They haven't grown up. Do you think the Lord is going to entrust valuable spiritual things to a baby Christian? Does he love them? Of course he loves them. But you have to prove that you've grown. And he looks to see that. I think one of the toughest moments in our life, maybe just me, in my life, is the moment I handed my 16-year-old son the keys. That was tough. <laughs> but I did that because I watched him and I knew he was smart enough and responsible enough that he could take care of the car. And he was. Number six, we need to grow up in Christ so we don't lead others astray. We're mature enough not to put a stumbling block in the life of another baby Christian. 
that we don't cause offense to others. That we're mature enough to be an example and lead other people. That's why we need to grow up. I wish when someone became a Christian and part of the family of God immediately, they were growing up. But it's not the way it works. I'm sure you run across a lot of Christians who are baby Christians that come into the, the belief and the faith and fellowship. And they need older ones, mature ones, as examples to show them what to do and what not to do. That's a valuable thing to do. You know, so many of us want to be in ministry. So many want us to be behind the pulpit. So many of us want to have these different giftings and so on. Do you know one of the great things you can do is to be an example to another Christian, baby Christian? It's not that glorious, I know. But it's so needed. So needed. But God won't entrust you, that baby Christian, into your hands when you're only a baby Christian yourself. Number seven, it's so we can do battle with the enemy. We don't send children to war. It takes a full-grown warrior to take on an enemy. An enemy. And lastly, number eight, it's so we can reproduce. So we can reproduce. So we can lead others to Christ. It takes a full-grown, mature believer to lead another to Christ. And I'm not talking just about testimony. Thank God for your testimony. And, and you can be a young Christian and tell, in fact, most of the, of the new Christians, you can't shut them up. They're just out there telling, telling everybody what Jesus did for them. That's great. That's wonderful. But when it comes right down to taking a person from that stage and leading them into the kingdom and being able to tell them what it's all about and the verses they need to know and what they have to do, it takes a mature believer. We need to be that. So I'm wondering, I just gave you eight reasons. There's more. Can you think of any other reasons why we need to grow up in Christ to be mature believers? Well, I challenge you, when you go home, you're sitting there with your Bible and doing some devotions or sometimes, ask a little that question. Lord, what else is needed? Can I also ask, did any of these reasons touch your heart? You say, well, never thought of that. Yeah, that's true. That could be. Well, I pray that these things I said with you this morning will find a lodging part in your heart. There's more to this message, but uh, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. I'll do the second part with you. What I've left is two major questions that I'll handle again when I see you next time. One, I'll ask the question, are you a mature believer? How do you know? How do you know? There's all sorts of checkpoints and signs and signals in the Word that tell you where you're at, how mature you are, how grown up you are in Christ. And we'll look at them. And we'll do a checklist. We'll have a checklist and give you some idea. Just exactly where am I? What level am I at? How am I growing in Christ? How am I doing? And the second question I'll, I'll share with you, the answer will be to the question. Well, then how do I mature? I'm not satisfied where I'm at. I know I could do better. I know there's more. How do I grow? What can I do to grow in Christ? So I pray that you'll be here for that because they're two important questions. Okay? Two important questions. Be by your heads for a moment. Father, we so thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit who reveal, reveals it to us. And today, Lord, we've looked at a, a question that's near to your heart. Lord, you need growing up mature believers. There's so much for us to do. There's so much as a, a church, as a body of believers, as a body of Christ, we need to do, but we can't do it if we're children. And Lord, deep down, I believe that there is a, a cry in, 
and a desire in the heart of each person sitting here that says, yeah, I want to be grown up. I want to be matured. I want God to use me. I want to be of value to the kingdom and to this church. So Lord, teach me. Teach me how to grow. And I recognize, Father, that there's no finish. There's no topping off to the level I can keep on growing every day, every year, a whole lifetime, becoming more like Jesus for your glory and your honor. Holy Spirit, take this message and do with it whatever you want in the hearts of these precious people. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.